I have uh, 6 o'clock p.m., and on that we will call the Committee of the Whole to order. And start with roll call, Tom. Bowman. Here. Berg. Here. Bonet. Here. Doyle. Here. Groff. Manny. Here. Montemayor. Here. Moody. Here. Perez. Here. Renflesh. Here. Stefan. Van Ackern, Vanderwiller, Wangaman, Warner, and Winninger. 13 present. 13 present. We have a quorum on that. Uh, first off tonight, I'd like to ask Scott Maliff of TV8 to uh, give us some pointers on using the microphone. Sometimes we have some problems with the audience hearing us. Thank you. In an effort to provide the best quality television coverage of city meetings, we need your help. Uh, there's been an increasing level of inconsistency with the audio of both the Common Council and the Committee of the Whole meetings. Uh, maintaining a clear, intelligible, and continuous sound for the cable cast is paramount to the viewing public. Simply put, people won't watch if they can't hear. And the result is a frustrated citizenry who want to know what's going on with their city government, but are unable to hear the discussion. There are three simple things you can do to help alleviate the situation. One, clip the microphone um, to your person at the start of the meeting and remove it at the conclusion of the meeting. Um, we'll be taking it on and off, with the exception of uh, whoever's called to, to do the Pledge of Allegiance for the Common Council meetings. Uh, <clears throat> Second, center the microphone uh, as best you can. A gentleman just below the knot on your necktie, um, you know, a, a lapel uh, is also, also works well. Um, and, and get it as, as close to your mouth as possible. Three, uh, do not hold the microphone in your hand. Uh, these microphones are not intended to be handheld. They're far too sensitive to the rubbing of, of fingers, the rustling of papers. Um, the vibration of, uh, on the, the wire. And, and it, it just results in a lot of rustling and, and noise um, if you're watching at, at home. Um, three, it, it also will alleviate, uh, by not holding in your hand, will alleviate the variances in turning away and, and gesturing, which when we get passionate and carried away in, in discussion, as often happens, um, this sort of, of thing uh, will <clears throat> will detract from from uh, voice, and uh, if we follow these simple guidelines, it will help us all look and sound a lot better in the eyes of, ears of our television audience. Let's try and not fall back into our bad patterns, because good habits can be as hard to break as bad ones. And that's all I have. Thank you very much. And I thank you, Scott, for that. Uh, I would ask for approval of the minutes of our August twenty fifth, two thousand and three meeting. I have a motion and second for approval of our minutes. Are there any additions or subtractions? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Hearing none, chair votes aye. Motion passes. Tonight, I would like to first thank you for attending tonight's Committee of the Whole meeting. We will have a presentation tonight on Maywood, and in particular, the proposed Ecology Center edition. I'd like to introduce Dave Cook-Cook, the Parks Inter Inter Environmental Director, Mike Marcheski, the architect for the Ecology Center, and Rich Machevsky, President of Elwood H. May Environmental Park Association. At this time, I'll turn it over to Dave. Thank you. We've got sound for sound There we go. Okay. Well, first off, uh, thank you so much for serving your community and for taking the time to listen to what we have to present to you tonight. I think we have an exciting proposal to share with you about Maywood, uh, the city's largest city park. And uh, it's, we have a three-part program or presentation for you tonight. I'll be talking a little bit about the history of Maywood to kind of up, uh, upgrade you on what the place is all about, what we do out there, and how we do it. And then Mike Marcheski is going to be talking about the uh, proposed building addition and sharing with you some of the architectural plans that have been created. And then Rich Machievsky will follow up with a discussion about the, uh, the funding, fundraising that's gone on and the fundraising that will help support that building in the future. 
So to begin with tonight, what I would like to do is to, to help you understand a little bit more about what we do at Maywood, uh, the kinds of programs that we offer, and who we serve out there. And for that, I've got a short 10-minute video that was, was uh, created by some of our volunteers with the help of TV8. So I'll share that with you to start with. Welcome to Maywood, your environmental park. Elwood H. May Environmental Park, commonly known as Maywood, is a public park in the city of Sheboygan. Maywood is open year-round, bursting with biodiversity. Use of the park and all of its features is free. Maywood is 120 acres of natural beauty, preserved for this and future generations. Enjoy the trails for hiking, birding, and cross-country skiing. View wildlife in the restored prairie, wetlands, or forests. Education is the major mission at Maywood, and we endeavor to make learning fun. The Ecology Center offers a large variety of school programs for all ages, preschool to college level. This is environmental education that is up close and hands-on. Many of the lessons are taught by Mother Nature herself as she reveals her secrets in the huge outdoor classroom that is Maywood. Trained volunteer naturalists help guide and interpret. School children come to Maywood for seasonal hikes and programs to learn about plants, animals, water quality, soils, weather, animal tracking, and wilderness skills. All year long, students of all ages can spend an entire day at Maywood, learning the lessons of nature and of life. They learn perseverance and positive attitude while gaining wisdom about the environment. Life lessons include defeats and triumphs. They learn valuable messages about environmental stewardship. They learn the value of cooperation and find that most barriers can be overcome with a little help from friends. Both teamwork and cooperation are necessary. The key to learning is having fun. By learning environmental messages through hands-on activities, students realize that Earth's natural resources need protection. The Arboretum at Maywood is a five and a half acre site featuring Wisconsin native plants Located at the edge of the prairie and extending to the bank of the Pigeon River, the Arboretum offers a place for children and adults to learn to identify native trees and shrubs. Special features are a stone council ring and benches, 
and one half mile of trails, some handicap accessible. Winter is a special time at Maywood. The quiet serenity of sparkling snow-covered terrain provides the ideal setting for hiking, cross-country skiing, or snowshoeing. Maywood offers a variety of public programs and workshops, both indoors and outdoors, throughout the winter. Education isn't just for children. People of all ages and interests enjoy a variety of programs, including special presenters, weekend workshops, interpretive hikes, outings, and field trips, and youth day camps. Community events at Maywood are an annual tradition of family fun. March is maple syrup time. One of the most tasteful events at Maywood is Flapjack Day in March. Visitors learn about the entire process and history of maple syrup, from collecting the sap, to boiling it down in the sugar shack, to tasting the sweet syrup. Each year, hundreds of visitors come out and enjoy the promise of spring, combined with old time fiddle music and sizzling flapjacks. Earth Day celebration at Maywood is a major event. Earth Day is celebrated at the end of April. You may be greeted by Eco himself. And you are sure to find activities that interest the entire family, from bat house building to scoping the skies. You can walk or you can ride. Wherever you go, there's something different to see and do. You can paddle a kayak on the pond. You can learn about reptiles and amphibians. You can go fishing or hike the trails. Get down and dirty while learning about organisms of the food chain. The Pigeon River is a great spot to explore. And even if the weather and wind don't always cooperate, Maywood celebrates Earth Day in a big way because conservation and stewardship of the Earth is what Maywood is all about. Halloween hike in the fall is a fun and educational guided tour taking families on a night hike to meet entertaining characters along the trail. The Maywood Earth Ride brings out recreational cyclists and outdoor lovers for a fun-filled bicycle tour of scenic Sheboygan County. Riders enjoy the fall tour in September along with great food and prizes and help support the park at the same time. Volunteers are the lifeblood of Maywood. Over 100 active volunteers serving on a wide variety of committees donate thousands of service hours annually. Maywood is what it is today because of generous volunteer support that so many people throughout the community give. Volunteers staff the reception desk, host programs, assist with community events, publish a quarterly newsletter, and give in numerous ways to help keep Maywood's educational and recreational opportunities alive and vibrant. Service organizations, local businesses, and support from the Elwood H. May Environmental Park Association have helped Maywood grow to become one of the city's greatest treasures. Come experience Maywood. And again, this video was put together by volunteers as well as uh, help from TV8. Um, you can see on, on one of these screens coming up that we do have a web page that you can tap into if you're interested in, in uh, participating in some of the programs.
Well, as you saw in the video, Maywood is the city's largest city park with 120 acres, and we do have a huge diversity of different kinds of habitats out there. We've got a wetlands, a prairie that was restored, a coniferous forest, a deciduous forest, really a jewel in this community. And in that 120 acres, uh, the, the big difference between, say, Maywood and all of the other city parks is the fact that not only do we, do we offer recreation, but we offer education as well. So that would be the big distinction between us and, and the rest of the city parks that we, we offer. And in fact, uh, we currently offer programs that bring through about 20,000 people on an annual basis. However, I just got my six month figures uh, from January through June, and we're already at uh, 14,100 uh, for this first six months. So I know that we'll be well above 20,000 by the end of the year. Programs for students, school programs, go on from September all the way through the winter months right through June. And once we get to the summer break, we continue with programs for kids as well. We do seven weeks worth of day camp programs for them. Um, we also, of course, offer lots of programs for adults and families in addition. In fact, you all get our quarterly news newsletter, so you're probably aware that we put on about 20 programs every quarter for families and, and adults. Um, in addition to that, we also have the seasonal events that you just saw. Those five seasonal events are our big events that we have coming up. Flapjack Day in March, Earth Day in April, are one of our biggest fundraising events coming up this weekend, which is Earth Ride. Um, that's a huge event, and uh, we, we couldn't contain it to just folks in, in Sheboygan. Uh, word got out last year in the uh, Bicycling Magazine, which is a nationwide magazine, that the Earth Ride is one of the top 25 in the country. Uh, the result of that is that we now have registrants coming from Minnesota, Iowa, Illinois, as far away as California, New York, and Georgia. So that's a huge event that will be happening this weekend. If you get a chance to stop out and see that, you might want to uh, take advantage of that. Uh, the public also utilizes our facility, too, for their own events. Uh, we have a lot of groups that come out and make use of the facility. Generally, those are environmentally related groups like Audubon, Boy Scouts, service organizations. And usually those same people and same organizations are also the same people that uh, supply the greatest amount of volunteer and financial support as well. When you visit Maywood, there's probably two things that will be apparent. One is that when you go into our program room, you'll see that the size of that program room, which is limited to 50 people, is not nearly enough for the amount of people that come through the center. And so Mike Marcheski and Rich Machievsky are here tonight to address the addition. But the other thing that may become apparent to you as well, in addition to the fact that we're short on space, is that with all these people coming through, there is a lot of, of work that needs to be done to maintain trails and keep the building clean. And not only do we have our building to take care of, but we also have, besides the Ecology Center, we also have two garages, and we have over 1,000 square feet of boardwalks, bridges, and decks that must be maintained. And we have miles and miles of trails that require annual resurfacing. Dead trees and limbs need to be uh, kept off the trails. Um, we have to solve erosion problems. And we have to uh, take care of grass cutting and snow plowing in addition. Now, why am I telling you all of this stuff? The reason is because Maywood is a, an extremely impressive model of financial efficiency. And to give you an example, our 2003 budget is $162,000. $478. Now that covers all of the programs that you just saw and all of the maintenance that we just talked about. And if you'd search around the, the, the city and search around some of the school district departments, I bet you'd be able to find some departments where just the top two people would eat up that whole budget in salaries. And so our salaries are also included in that $162,000 and that, that's salaries for the entire staff at Maywood. And the entire staff is two people, both of which have master's degrees. Our environmental park director, that's me, and our naturalist. Now, granted, there are a lot of other people from the city that come on out and help us with some very technical things. If we have a, a serious electrical problem or uh, some problem with technology, we'll get some specialists in, and our budget will cover the cost of, of those people doing that work. Um, so it's not all up to us. But what's the secret? to uh, being able to do so much on so little? Uh, there are a couple of answers to that. First one is that we wear multiple hats. Um, the naturalist, Colleen, and myself 
do a lot of different kinds of things besides what we were actually hired to do. For example, um, my main focus of when I was hired was to do administration, education, and management of the center. In addition to that, I occasionally do things like handle minor plum plumbing problems, technology problems, electrical problems, um, cut grass, plow snow, resurface trails, constru construct buildings, uh, construct exhibits, construct outdoor features, plant trees, uh, conduct pre prescribed burns, and numerous other things in that long list. And same with Colleen, our naturalist. Um, she was hired to do uh, education as well as to assist with some of the management. If you come out there, chances are you're probably going to catch her on, on one of her days cleaning toilets, mopping floors, vacuuming, that sort of thing. So the multiple hats thing is one of the ways that we're able to, to get a lot more out of that budget than, uh, than what most people can. The second thing, and more importantly, is the fact that we've really built a lot of community partnerships. And that's extremely important. The Elwood H. May Environmental Park Association is one of those many partners, and they've, they kind of have taken the leadership role in all of this and supply us with a tremendous number of volunteers as well as a, some bu a budgetary money that supplements what the city provides us. And so uh, in terms of financial contributions, the, the association provides us with uh, money for all of our programs. They provide us with money for all of our office supplies. So all of our pens and pencils and papers, all of our toner. Uh, if you come on out and look at our copy machine, our co at our uh, computers, our TVs, our VCRs, our cameras, our video cameras, all of those have been paid for either by the association or grants. Um, I counted up today that we do have 10 computers out at, out at Maywood. That seems absurd. Uh, some of them are on the shelf and not being used any longer because they're pretty old. But many of them are being used by volunteers as well as our staff. All of those computers, with the exception of one, were paid for by either the association or grants or gifts as a donation from someone out of the community. One computer was provided from the city, and that was a used computer that we bought from another department. So we are trying to be as efficient with the budget as possible, and I know that's a big topic these days. Um, so one of the things I wanted to get across is the fact that we are very conservative with the money that you give us. We do try to make, uh, make the best use of it as possible. And it does require hundreds of volunteers to work there. It's not just the two people that you've hired. The two people that you hired also are involved in the coordinating and the supervision of literally hundreds of other people involved. For the Earth Ride coming up, there will be well over 100 people volunteering for that one event alone. Besides that, we also have service organizations, environmental groups, scouts, churches, businesses, and many, many more that have lent a hand throughout the years to help us do what we do out at Maywood. And Maywood truly brings out the best in our community. And again, I just wanted to say thank you for giving us the time to show you what Maywood's all about and how we operate. With that, what I'd like to do is turn it over to Mike Marcheski, who's going to review the building plans of the proposed addition that we've been working on out there for quite a number of years. So, Mike. Good evening, I'm Mike Marcheski. Uh, I'd like to just take a couple of minutes to walk through some preliminary drawings that we put together uh, for the proposed addition to the Ecology Center. Uh, in your handout, some of these same drawings will appear. So if you, these drawings will, will appear somewhat tiny to you, but we'll try to uh, uh, just get through this and, and uh, you can perhaps follow along with your handout. Uh, this is an overall site plan of Maywood. All of the gray parts uh, which, which show up the best perhaps are really parking areas. Miller Road is up here somewhere. Uh, the Pigeon River is down off of the drawing in that location. The existing ecology center is the white building. That's about total basement and first floor, about 7,400 square feet. The proposed addition is this colored area. Uh, we're proposing about 8,700 square feet. That's both on the first floor and second floor. Um, Sugar Shack was mentioned earlier. That's in this location. So the actual addition, again, you can perhaps follow along with uh, the floor plan in your handout. The existing building is, again, the white portion. 
uh, of the drawing. The existing entry into, into the, the Ecology Center right now is here. We're proposing a new addition, and I'll go through some of the rooms in a moment. We're also wrapping around certain portions of the building to connect the addition to the existing building. Uh, there's also a basement area. Primarily, what we're doing is moving the entry to this corridor. This is a, a lobby exhibit area. Uh, there'll be vestibules on each end. You'll be able to look through the building actually to see some of that Pigeon River Valley below. Uh, the, the main portion of the facility uh, is a, a multi-purpose room, we're calling it, meeting room. Uh, we'll be able to now seat approximately 170 people for programs and about 110 in dining situations. Uh, this was a very preliminary drawing. We did not, did not show the elevator, but there would be an elevator as well. Um, a nature center, reception area, bathrooms, and then again, our display, additional display in corridors connecting into the existing building. The lower level, um, would be for future use. There would be mechanical spaces there, storage, um, those sorts of things uh, on that lower level. That would also be a place that uh, one of the things that, that happens is kids will come up uh, from the river muddy and, and bring their projects and they can work on those projects in that lower level. The building is going to look um, like this, with this being the two-story entry portion, the new entry, this being the multi-purpose room, the connecting corridors back to the existing building. Uh, the proposed addition will be very sympathetic to the existing building using similar materials, primarily cedar siding, uh, similar stone to what is on the existing building. Uh, as you walk around it on these elevations, you'll see the two-story, or it's basically what today you might call a walkout basement, but at this elevation, it looks really like a two-story building. And there'll be large decks around that building for viewing again uh, out to the Pigeon River. Uh, I think with that, perhaps I could turn it back to Rich and he could talk about the financial aspects. I'll leave this up. Good evening. I'm sure you'll agree with me with that what you've heard so far has been good news and now I have what I hope is some really good news. The association has been fundraising for this project for about 10 years now. Uh, that was when the f former city council amended the master site plan for Maywood to include a uh, proposed facility addition. Uh, they looked at what the park was doing and they anticipated the increase in usage and they made the amendment to the master site plan to allow for that. Um, that was when the fundraising campaign to make this a reality began uh, we have come to before the council uh, every couple of years to keep you appraised of the progress because we don't want it to be a surprise when one day we have a building, we turn over the keys to the city. Um, and tonight we're here to announce that to date we have raised about $800,000 for the building. We're not through yet either. Uh, our plan calls for raising uh, hopefully another $300,000. I would point out that we have met the initial fundraising goal of uh, three quarters of a million. In that time, as everyone knows, building costs have increased and we want to make sure that we have every penny in the kitty that we need to build this building before anything begins and to help operate the building. In the handout, um, we've covered some of these uh, numbers, uh, but basically that's where we stand today. And our purpose here is again to keep you appraised uh, of the status of the project. Uh, we are at the point where we're taking more concrete steps. Uh, we have engaged uh, an architectural firm to 
work on the actual construction drawings, and those are nearly complete today. Uh, we also have interviewed for a general contractor, and we have a, an arrangement worked out there. Um, and uh, uh, we hope to be uh, what is what we hope is will be the final leg of the fundraising uh, that will kick off uh, later this fall. Uh, I can't tell you with any accuracy how long it's going to take to reach that final hurdle. Um, it might take one year. We hope it's not going to take any more than three years. Uh, now that we have some firm plans, we can get bids for different parts of the project, and we will approach various community organizations and businesses asking for sponsorship over certain parts of the project. This is going to be a very powerful fundraising tool, uh, and we hope that's going to translate to some uh, pretty quick action. Um, with that, I think we've shared with you all that we can, except to answer whatever uh, questions you might have on your mind. Uh, any older persons have a question, or Mayor Schramm? Mayor Schramm? Well, first of all, I'd like to congratulate you for the work you and, and the committee have done. Excellent job for raising funds and, and moving forward out at Maywood. It is a pleasure. I use that not as often as I like to, but we go out there and we go out there with our grandkids, and it's a pleasure to be out there. Um, on the building, and I was just looking at the building, you said you would blend the new part of the building in with the, old, the older portion of the building. Now, is there going to be remodeling also an older portion, upgrading, um, or is that going to stay pretty much what it's like for that price? As far as the new building attaching to the old building, um, the only changes or upgrades that we'll need to do is a connection corridor will go uh, on the, in the basement, and so we'll have to knock out a wall there in order to make that connection corridor through the two basements. But otherwise, the existing building will stay just as it is. Um, there will be no other changes to it. So um, other than doing whatever we need to do to make the connection, uh, that would be it. OK, I was just wondering, because you do have some smaller rooms in the older building and right. hallways. I thought maybe you'd knock those that out, make that larger. Those will stay the way that they are. Um, since we will have, <clears throat> have a room that will serve as seating for 170, it actually will be nice now to have those smaller rooms so that we can take larger groups, and if we need to, break them up into smaller groups and put them into various rooms and work with them on, smaller, on a smaller scale. Okay. Again, congratulations. Excellent job. Thank you. Does anyone else have a question on the council? On that, I do have one question, for, and maybe Tom, perhaps you can answer this. I guess from the council tonight, what would you be looking for? Well, I guess we'd like a positive nod from the council to say, go ahead and finish up the fundraising. Uh, we've been keeping the council abreast and the public works committee abreast of what's going on for several years. We want to do our best to keep doing that, uh, but. The, the, before they kick into the last leg of the fundraiser, we'd uh, like the council's nod to say, go ahead, knock yourself out. And, and I think that's a good idea if the council feels uh, that's something I would like to do, I, I would recommend it. Alderman Montemayor. Uh, thank you. It certainly sounds as though you've done a marvelous job, and you have. And as Tom said, yes, knock yourself out, go ahead. Do it. You certainly are responsible. Thank you so much. Well, thank you. Um, if you get a chance to come out to Maywood, uh, there are some white, tall white posts out there that identify the footprint of the new addition. So in case you're wondering exactly where that addition would go, you'd have an opportunity to, to see where it would fit into the existing building. And if, if I'm around, please go ahead and stop me, and I'll be happy to, to show you more details. I can't guarantee that you'll find me out there in a white shirt and a tie, though. But um, so just look for, look for the grungiest guy out there. On that, are there any further questions? Alderman Bonet? Uh, yes. If that, was a mer if that was a motion, Marilyn, I'll second it. I think it's a consensus of the council that everyone agrees that it's a good project and it's, it's really nice to see the community come together and all the people that support Maywood uh, supporting it financially too to keep the burden, that part of the burden off of the taxpayers is a wonderful thing, especially at this time. So uh, I think it's a good thing and I, and I won't speak for everyone on the council but I would, could say from looking around here I think everyone feels very positive about what you're doing. 
I'd like to thank the council for their support and also like to thank the Maywood group for all their hard work and efforts. It's going to be a very exciting project. Thank you. Okay, thank you. I just have, I, I'd like to thank Rich, Mike, and Dave for their informative presentation tonight. I think it was done very well. Yeah, Maywood truly is one of Sheboygan's finest assets, and I wish the association and others well in their efforts to expand Maywood with the addition of the Ecology Center. And one thing for sure, don't forget the Earth Ride this Saturday at Maywood. I think that's an important thing. Just, just your attendance there is a positive. You don't actually have to ride the bike, although one of these years I'm going to get over there. I'm getting a little better and a little better shape to ride that bike, and one time I'm going to ride it and that thing. But I think it's an easy way to support Maywood and help it move into the future. So consider that. Thank you. If you get a chance to ride in the Earth Ride, uh, I always tell people that there's, there's routes from 10 miles to 100 miles, and regardless if you ride the 100 mile route, I can almost guarantee you're going to weigh more once you get done than when you started because there's so many rest stops with food at them. So it's a great <laughs> event. And that's a good thing. Thank you. A motion to adjourn? All in favor? Aye. Stand adjourned. Thank you.